Hmm. Hero versus Clem. Best of three. Gonna be awesome, awesome, awesome. One second, guys. Okay. So, uh, Clem vs. Hero, this is, this is just like kind of a fun match. It feels like one that, if I had to guess a match was gonna end in a base trade, this might be it. Dude, I have these carpet tiles that I have fucked up with my rolling chair. Getting very frustrated. God. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I mean, Clem, a very aggressive player in general, loves to keep pressure on. Hero, I mean, you can't really get much more aggressive than that guy. So when these two butt heads, there's going to be some fantastic micro on both sides. I think a lot of it will be decided by build order choice and like on the fly decision making. It's hard to have a plan and just follow it through uh, as these two guys playing against each other. So, Nexus going down here it is a Reaper opener, but there's going to be a factory follow-up here for Clem. And there it is. See exactly how far he wants to go with this tech. Yeah, look at that. One on one and then two on the other. So, kind of an interesting uh, build optimization here. That, of course, is much better mining than... Th well, not much better, but better mining than three on one. Stargate on the way. And Clem should be going for a command center here. Yeah, he starts the command center in his main base. So, kind of playing a little bit safe here as well. Let's see how quick he goes for the starport. I, I'm actually... I'm interested in seeing what uh, Clem wants to, wants to go for here. So, there's the starport. There's a couple Reapers out on the map right now. Kind of blocking any incoming scouts. Hero ready to be mining immediately as that Nexus finishes. And the Reaper going to go across the map here. We'll see if it actually can get any intel. Don't think so, really. I think he... Did he catch a glimpse of that probe going across the map? Because it does look... Oh my god, you can hear its footsteps. It's so funny. Tosalopa, a scared beast. A couple more gates on the way. Nice placement there from Clem. Not going to end up losing anything, but the Three of Dups going to continue forward. Oracle actually doubles back. I think he's... Oh, man. And then Clem actually turned around as well. So a lot of back and forth right there. Now, uh, the Cyclone here... This is kind of interesting. Uh, does get that one kill and is going to force them to really rethink this position. In fact, he allows them to stay. So everything going to die. That did not feel like the good choice there. So he loses three. And how much damage does he really get? A few Marines? Doesn't feel that impactful. Doesn't feel like that great of a choice there from Hero. Does have multiple Oracles, though. And as this counterattack goes across the map, it does make me wonder how much anti-air is going to be here for these Oracles. I think we have potential for a lot of damage here. Ooh, his first shot. Very bad there, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the Viking comes out. I'm honestly, like, a little bit surprised. I almost feel like he should have just gone for it. It's just a Viking. It takes a while, but I guess he'll end up saving everything. Going after this gateway, maybe the Cybernetic score as well. Definitely very annoying to deal with. A couple Phoenixes are out now to help him micro against this. Of course, lifts on that uh, Cyclone going to be very useful indeed. And does end up targeting down. Very nice targeting there on that uh, Oracle. Or on that Phoenix, rather, sorry. Or, no, it was the Oracle, I'm sorry. 
I'm like getting confused. I'm like, wait, there's an Oracle. No, that was the other one. Okay, so it looks like he ends up holding. And this is going to leave Hero with a nine worker advantage right now. A nine worker advantage. Also does have that proxy. Third command center on the way. Definitely feels like it's been a bit better here for Hero. Ooh, more Adepts being warped in. Triple Adept Shade going forward. Yeah, with the Siege Tank there, this is pretty good positioning. Oh my god, he actually goes for it. And comes in, lifts up that Siege Tank. Looks like the SCV's coming out to fight, doing a pretty good job there. The uh, tank does get repaired, so we'll stay alive for a little bit. Looks like he does use the secondary lift. <laughs> and not quite taken down. Another Siege Tank goes up on the high ground there, but Hero pushing forward for that damage. Ends up killing it, and yeah, that's too much. GG. Hero able to take it down. Clever StarCraft guy feeling a little bit nervous right now that this is, in fact, not pre-recorded. Is it impossible to release a traditional RTS in the vein of Brood War and achieve massive what? success in 2023? Mm. X369, whose sperm are you drinking tonight? No buddies? Okay, so I like this question though. Uh what do you guys think? Is it possible? To re release a traditional RTS in the vein of Brood War and achieve massive success in 2023. Is that something that's possible? One person says yes. Every other person strongly thinks no. Here's the thing. If you got something close enough to Brood War, why not just play Brood War? Statistically speaking, you're drinking the molecules which have existed in all of chat's sperm cells at some point in time. Probably. No. No. Anonymous I source my coffee from my local coffee monger. What if instead of it's waiting for that way. Triple developers to save us, why don't we save ourselves with indie games that use the same type of graphics we had in the 90s so anyone can make them without any modeling experience? I mean, aren't those the games that are doing well right now in general? I'm not... I don't think any AAA developer is doing a good job right now. There have been some great RTSs that have come out. But anyways, like, if you try to make a game like, Art, uh, like Brood War, it won't be as good as Brood War. Whereas, if you make a game that's like a dumbed-down version of RTS that does more for the player, you're like, well, this is... More people do this, right? Like, it's more accessible or whatever. And then at least there's, like, a difference. So, like, there's a reason to play it over Brood War. Okay, so we have this kind of funny-looking forward gateway from Hero. Right? I think I wasn't really paying attention right at the very beginning there, but that is a forward gateway where I think just one of his first probes were sent out and when it got 100 minerals it made the pylon so it's like it's out there he's gonna get the units more quickly uh towards his opponent but you know let's see what type of uh damage he's able to achieve with this now reaper getting started immediately there is his already on the way really interesting aggressive build here I can't remember seeing anything quite like this before. Like, it's such a funny location for a proxy. And in fact, when this goes up and scouts and doesn't see a gateway, he's going to be like, oh, damn, is this like a, the Max Packs build? It's not exactly. Now, what does he do? Does he start a bunker? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, hero. Oh, 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 hero. Dude, this is so funny. Okay, is he just going to find the gold base? He does. He does find it. 
Now this one Zot getting up here, putting some damage onto the SCV. Bunker not quite done. This will get killed off. And now the bunker's up, so it's like, how much more damage can you get? I mean, the Adept can shade behind and maybe do something. Ooh, he saves the Zot somehow. Kind of crazy. Now, once this is back here, you yeah, I was going to say, you can just pop the two Marines and the Reaper and kill it. Like, you need some micro, but... Or maybe not even if he's going to be targeting down the SCVs. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't seem like any of this pressure has done a good job so far. But he is about to have a gold nexus. He'll probably recall some probes over. And, you know, Twilight is on the way. So let's see what he does with his Twilight. Like, I mean, that that's very hero-esque. This is like, uh, if you're a little bit of a gambler, Protoss, you can take this gold base and just, like, mass up Blink Stalkers or Charge Lots and go for it. All right, this Zealot, I don't know what the hell he's doing over there. It don't even tell me that that got recalled. Okay, no, it didn't. Because that would have been the silliest stuff ever. Now, a bunch of probes do get recalled, so he's going to go ahead and start mining. 12 of 12 uh, immediately, which is nice. Oh, the Hellion goes behind. That is so annoying. Are you kidding me? Dude, this is so annoying. Clem is crushing right now. All right, does get that pick off. Double mind drop going across the map. Now, we have Blink Stalkers on the way here. All right, Prism coming out. But is he going to go, like, heavily all in with these Blink Stalkers? How many gates? I think we're only on three gates, so that's, like, kind of a standard follow-up. Is he planning on utilizing the extra minerals for more aggression, or is he planning on utilizing the extra minerals for another base? That's what we're about to learn. Now, Clem going to go ahead, boost in with this mind drop. Yeah, Hero sees it. Going to back up. <laughs> Prism kill would be sick. Yeah, the burrow and unburrow micro is quite nice. You're just you're making him lose mining time basically by burrow and burrow. Okay, solid hit. I mean that's that's fine. Picks up this one. Yeah, and definitely a big missed hit right there. Clem able to pick both up. He does have a bunch of stalkers across the map now, so let's see what hero can get done with this. Okay, blinks up onto the Marines. There is an auto turret. Auto turret gets taken out. Yeah, the siege tank adding a lot of damage, but Hero is not going to leave the main base. In fact, just blinks over to the right. Second siege tank coming up. I don't think Hero is going to get it done here. Holy crap, he's crazy. Blinks right up on top of that siege tank, taking a ton of damage from these Marines. Oh, another big set of mine hits here, or the first big set of mine hits. And now Hero has to get out of there. Look at this. Hero is down so much. He's got barely any workers. Barely any army supply. Like, he has to just be all in from here. There's not really another way. Oh, man. He didn't even kill that Raven with that big volley he made. The Zealot did a pretty good job tanking and dealing some damage here. I mean, it's good micro. It's good micro. You know, considering... Like, he's trying his best to get the right targets. Oh, shit. Another five probes. It really looks like we'll be seeing a game three. These stalkers are super, super soft. And he cannot even bust that bunker. <laughs> it took him a minute to realize that, like, oh, yeah, he's out repairing me. Let's see. Gets up here. Gonna drop. Well, he does have those adepts. The adepts helping out like a surprising amount, but the stalker count is almost gone. Everything kind of getting surrounded right now. He is killing some SCVs. Look at that, man. How many kills are we actually gonna have? Yeah, his stalkers are just ridiculously low on health right now.
Oh, he's finally going to deal with this, I guess. But it actually gets out as well. So painful. So painful. So I think Hero's just straight dead from here. 28 workers against 43. He's got lower army supply. He's got no real tech. You know, he's got stalkers and a prism, and that's it. He's trying to get charge. Hard to imagine that doing anything, though. Man. So painful. Guys, what's the name of that that the like the Texas Smash or something like that from that that Hero Academia show? What's the name of that? I can't recall. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't even pretend. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how to watch his current tunes. <laughs> Detroit Smash? I thought there was a Texas one. I can't. I can't recall. But I'm pretty sure there was a Texas one. I just I wanted to make a Clem joke because he's from Texas, but never mind. Never mind, guys. I apologize. I thought you guys were all weebs, but I guess I guess it's just home smack at the end of the day. Clever Starcraft guy cheered. X three hundred. Fun fact: I speak French, and Clem said in a French interview he picked Terran in Starcraft two cause it was the most broken on Brood War. Just say he literally never said that. Clem is so young that he's never even played Brood War. Literally never played it. He might have played Call of Duty on the Xbox. All right, so, uh, you know, the uh, other gold base is being taken here. So, I mean, he's running out of minerals here. Makes a lot of sense. Uh-oh, 10 probes going to go down, it looks like. Woo! 10 probes go down. Okay, this is going to be GG, and we're going to go on to game number three. Wild all in from Hero, just not working out. Glenn <laughs> will be born next week. That's how young he is. Oof. Yeah, I, I can have recommendations for you. As far as uh, things with removable uh, microphones for headsets, like I use... Um, what are the names of these? this again? Why is my brain failing me? What's the name of my fucking headset? It's the Corsair... Um, I can't believe I can't think of this right now. Oh, Virtuoso XT. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Macroturn. You're the best. Uh, but yeah, so, like, I haven't really used the microphone much on it, because I use, like, really professional microphones. Um, so I can't really speak to quality of microphone, but this headset, like, I've looked since, I, I haven't been sponsored by Corsair in a long time now, since, like, December. So it's been almost a year of not being sponsored by them, and I can't find a better headset than this. This is the most comfortable, best sound headset that I have personally found. So the Virtuoso XT is very good, but it's very expensive. But it's got it's got good features and stuff, so you might want to just look it up. Um, as far as mice go, generally Razer Viper mice are very good. Razer mice are very good. Logic mice are very good. There are some very good Corsair mice. Most companies have at least one mouse that's really good. So, like, you can kind of look around for that and just get what you, you feel like you really want. But for me personally, I like uh, Razer Viper's line. Like, I think all of those are very, very high quality. And you can get the cheaper ones, and they're like 98% as good. And you can play with a fucking $30 mouse and be a pro gamer. So it's like really good. Uh, as far as keyboards go, it's, you know, get something 10 keyless. You don't want a number pad on there. It makes you artificially have your arms further apart than you may want. Uh, and then you're mostly thinking about switches. Uh, generally, people use linear, not tactile switches anymore with RTS games. So I would suggest you go linear. Um, my favorite 
keyboard that you can just buy out of a box is uh like the um the Niz Plum. It's like a membrane, like a Topre switch, which is a membrane switch keyboard. Really, really good. Not for everybody though. Um I wouldn't get a razor keyboard. People generally don't care for razor keyboards. Uh and the key layout's really weird. It's very hard to get used to. Um Maybe they've improved since I've used them. I've, the last time I used a Razer keyboard, I didn't like it, but that was like 10 years ago. So maybe I'm not being fair on that. Uh, Corsair makes very, very good keyboards. I can definitely vouch by that. Like, my backup keyboard, if the keyboard I'm using right now breaks, is a Corsair. Uh, Leopold's are good. Philco, uh, Magist Touch are good. Ducky are good. There's a lot of There's a lot of good keyboards. And then, as far as mouse pads go, like, some, you can get something cheap, like a Razer Goliathus or something that's very strong. Or, you know, the MM300 from Corsair is very good. They're all, like, kind of similar. Uh, but if you want to go higher-end, Artisan mouse pads are good. So, anyways, there you go. That's my review. Let's get into the looking at what's going on in this actual game. All right. Uh, so we have a blink opener here from Hero. Not a big surprise. Good to see. More of a straightforward macro build. It looks like it's a... Is this going to be straight up a two-gate blink into fast third? It might well be. Uh, we don't see that uh, too often from Hero. That's that's a build we see from Trigger all the time. But it's, it's like the most... It's the greediest uh, version of the blink opener. But it's good. Oh, adds another gate. Okay, okay. So... Just three gate blink then, which is, you know, this is the standard. Uh, Korean Protoss has really prefer this build. Over on Clem's side, uh, you know, getting a Cyclone out here, I think he's, you know, I mean, the Cyclone is, is pretty solid. I actually wonder now, because I was, again, not paying super attention right at the very beginning here, if he saw that Twilight or not. Uh, because generally the Cyclone not super, super helpful against a build like this. And in fact, yeah, he's gonna poke up there, see that it is in fact gonna be Blink Stalker. And generally siege tanks are gonna be what you want, not cyclones, but I mean, it's not that the cyclone is useless here. It still definitely has use and is cheaper. So there's some good things. And he hides it there as well. Doesn't allow the uh, Adept Shade to see it. They have very small vision. All right, so, I mean, this is... It's kind of interesting looking at this game because this is kind of the most standard game so far. Uh, Hero really not doing anything too wild. Like, he'll get in here and he'll try a little bit of harassment. I don't think he's going to get too much done. I don't think he thinks he's going to get too much done either. It's like, you got to poke, you got to try. Right? Kind of a funny-looking little drop. Some nice blink backs there showing how the Cyclone can be a little bit weak in these situations, but... You know, not the most valuable war prism that we see going across the map, right? It's like two adept, two stalker. Yeah, you're going to be able to one try SCVs very easily. All right, that uh, that Hellion will get out of there. Little push up to the front. Not entirely sure about this move, but you will blink around the bunkers and kill a few SCVs. Yeah, no, I guess this is really high quality since he knows most of the units are uh, blocking his prism from coming back in. And in fact, he blinks over here. Beautiful move. Now that there, that was pretty fantastic. I will definitely give him that one. Now he recalls this prism as he has to figure that like you must be making a, a Viking, right? So let's save that. Comes in, putting on some damage onto this uh, command center. I don't think he like thinks that this is going to do very much. But maybe shred off a few units, right? Shave off a few units. Tries to blink out. Tries to get that Raven. Not going to be able to do so. So towards the end there, really not doing as well as he had hoped. More Stalkers on the way as he's taking his third. All right, another, another move in here. Kind of a funny drop on top of those bunkers. In fact, 
The prism gets picked off really quickly. That was kind of a weird choice, a weird move here from Hero, and he is like way over committing targeting down Marauders when he doesn't have enough to one-shot them. Feels like some flawed execution here on these attacks. Like, dude, look at that. One health. This continues to happen. Hero seems to be just ever so slightly off. Finally does get the pick, but takes a bunch more damage in the meantime. Gets out of there. You know, I, I, okay, so <laughs> I'll talk about that after, but uh, it looks like we're going to have, you know, the charge upgrade finishing up, putting four Zots into a prism and warping in a few more here as well. Maybe to tank for these stalkers. Still trying to poke the front. He wants these units out here to see if he can get something done, uh, you know, with that, with that prism. Now, auto turret harassment coming down. Very annoying for Hero, but doesn't have to lose too much if he's quick, right? Like, what's he going to lose? Three probes, maybe? Maybe four? Now, kind of a big warp in here in the main base. All right, going to go ahead and let those fight. And, oh, God, he's losing a lot of these stalkers. In the meantime, but hold on. An immortal coming up. Immortal definitely can mess up that math very, very quickly. Prism, once again, going to hide in that back corner. All right, who is ahead right now? Clem has such a better army, it's hard to explain. Like, his army is such higher quality in every way. He's got plus one attack. He has stim. He has combat shields. He has medevacs, mines, marauders, marines. What do we have over here? Two immortals, some damaged stalkers, and a prism. He does have the charge upgrade. He does have the blink upgrade. So those are at least something. But without any doubt, Clem is in a good position right here. He's taking damage, but I feel like... And look, he's doing a little bit of counter damage as well, which is really nice. Forcing some lost mining time, that type of thing. Clem's army is going to way outscale. I feel like he's going to have the potential here for a move out that can just win the game. Like, I think he can probably walk across the map and either do a full frontal attack at, like, the third base or lift off, go into the main, and there's not going to be a real way for Hero to split to hold all that. I really can't see it. I can't see it. There's just no way you have the damage to take that out. There's no splash damage as of yet. <coughs> Excuse me. I would have loved to see one Viking, though. That's the one. Th oh, there it is. <laughs> this is something I've talked about so much over the past. How long has StarCraft two been out? 13 years, something like that. Uh, having one Viking is so incredibly helpful. Now he doesn't have to worry about a warping. All right, so Clem is, like, he has a big ball of bio going across the map. Hero's counterattacking. He wants Clem to be busy and not attack him. But that's not going to happen. This attack is coming. It is looking really strong. Look at this. Burrows four mines. Holy shit. These mines are getting terrible hits, though. The worst hits you could ever see. Or the, rather, the literal lack of hits. Okay, that was funny. <laughs> Those are the dumbest four mines ever. It looked kind of like a good location, but yeah, definitely not. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so he has Psy Storm now. He has his double forge going. Still some nice harassment going on. Oh, shit. He gets two more hits there. That's crazy. Yeah, but Clem right now still has that, that big army advantage. Didn't end up doing the full frontal attack. Didn't end up doing the lift off to the main base. I felt like either of those uh, had some potential, but I think when he sees those high Templars, he's going to slow it down a little bit. I do not believe that we have a Ghost Academy as of yet. Hero right now, uh, you know, it, his high Templars and his Immortals are incredibly important right now. Uh, you know, he has to hit the storms. The Immortals are going to have to deal that extra damage to the Marauders as well. Because, again, his army is so much worse that he's really relying upon these very technical units to give him any sort of chance. 
Mines continue to do reasonably well. Hero not doing a great job of holding on against them. Wow, this one Marine going to destroy everything at this base, it seems. Uh, I mean, the storms are okay, but I think that this is where a hero might get overconfident. You don't want to actually engage here. I think hitting the edge is good, but if he fully attacks anywhere with this army, I... Dude, I can't even believe what I'm looking at there. Like, this full attack, this doesn't look like something that should work. Okay, see? Okay, if you're going to just poke and back up, that's fine. Oh, that EMP was just magnificent. The boosted EMP, insane. That's going to be one storm only. And Clem's going to win this and go on to the next round. Yeah, that is way too much damage. Lands his Vikings and everything. And from here, our hero at 17 supply doesn't actually have any sort of chance. That one, that seven kills on that thing. Insane. Almost got the shield battery too. So close. All right. This, I mean, Clem is looking to end the game. Look, he is up 50 army supply right now. A very near impossible task for Hero to come back. Yeah, more harassment on these probes. The amount of probes that have died to silly stuff is, is kind of wild. So, I mean, this is, it's, it, <laughs> okay, a counterattack comes down here from Hero. Like, his probes are all coming. You can tell that he is pretty, he's pretty dead at this point. He's trying to make something happen. Uh, yeah, he's doing the, the Texas Smash right now for my anime fans in the chat. For the cuties, men 30 years old or older who think that they are cute. Uh, okay, the blink forward, that's going to be, it's going to be GG. GG. 